The Egyptians believed in the divinity of animals to a certain degree. Because animals speak in a different language, they, the Egyptians thought that they were communicating with gods, and so they were held to be very special kinds of beings, um, unlike humans who could not directly communicate with gods unless they had specially been trained as priests. Animals were just born as gods' creatures and could automatically speak that secret language that gods could understand. So for the Egyptians, in a way, animals were had much greater proximity to divinity, unlike the idea of many other religions today where animals are regarded as lesser to human beings. The Egyptians believed that in a sacred animal the spirit of the god would enter into the body of this animal and animate it and so during the lifetime of the animal it would be like the god incarnate and people would pray to it, worship it in many ways and it would have oracular powers. So if someone had a question or they wanted to foretell the future and even in some cases if there was a question of judgment um, about property or inheritance or what have you, people would come instead of going to a judge they would go to the god at the temple and then ask the question of the god and the priest would interpret the movement. So if an animal such as the sacred apis bull were to be asked a question, he would move his head in a certain way or he would emit a sound and then the priest would interpret this and tell the people as to what they should do or how they should resolve any conflict that they had. The ancient Egyptians associated specific gods with specific animals and so we have Sekhmet for example who is a goddess of strength and rage and plagues. Then we have gods such as Thoth who is god of wisdom and writing and his main animal is a ibis. Now the sacred ibis has this long beak that bends down and looks like a pen and since Thoth is a god of writing that makes sense. Horus is represented by a raptor. Now people generally say Horus is a hawk but actually Horus is made up of a composite of different hawks. He is a super hawk. So you will have um, you know a falcon's eyes, the plumage of an eagle and a large combination because what Horus does is like the sun god he flies up high, he has great eyesight and he can sort of see things from afar. One of the most impressive gods in terms of size is Sobek. Um, Sobek was a crocodile god and he's sometimes shown as a human being with the head of a crocodile but quite often he is depicted as a crocodile himself and crocodiles were used for Sobek because Sobek is associated with the sun and in a very particular way because crocodiles can sit and bask for hours on a sandbank in the sun but sometimes they plunge deep into the depths of the water and this is the idea of the sun going down to sleep at night and then being resurrected in the daytime. Although some ancient Egyptian animal cults started as early as the first dynasty, if not before, the majority of animal worship was active in from the 26th dynasty on to the end of Egyptian civilization and the advent of Christianity. So it was from about 700 BC to nearly 400 AD that you have an intensely active um, animal cult system in ancient Egypt. Of course, some gods are more difficult to understand and they would be something like Seth. Seth is rather a complex divinity because no one can quite figure out what animal he is. Um, he looks like a combination of animals and perhaps he is a super weird animal. Clearly he is sort of almost mythological because he is a god of scary things. He's a god in the desert. He's a god of the unknown. He's a god of chaotic forces. And that's why he doesn't look like any one single animal that one can identify.